Hello, I'm Paul Weston. Has there ever been a time when the ideology and actions of Western politicians have been so out of kilter with the wishes of the electorate? And I would say no, there has not. An honest appraisal of the current situation uh, can only conclude our ruling class has crossed the democratic Rubicon and is now a genuine enemy of the people. Every four or five years, we vote for individual politicians based on manifestos promising us certain things, and each and every time we are betrayed. And this is despite the average voter uh, simply wanting an elected government to represent their best interests. Pre-election politicians promise lower levels of immigration, crime, taxes, bills, etc., and better services for health, education, transport, uh, and all manner of things we reasonably expect in return for our vote. But the moment these snake oil salesmen achieve power, they forget all about the promises they made, and instead they declare war against their own citizens. So legal and illegal immigration rises, as does crime. Our bills skyrocket, even as our wages are diluted, uh, courtesy of inflation driven purely by unsustainable government borrowing. And our police force, uh, sorry, I mean our police service, uh, is tasked with policing speech rather than catching criminals. And the government, of course, decrees the type of speech it wishes the police to police. So white Christian heterosexual males find they can now say very little uh, that will not result in a 5am visit from a corpulent copper, uh, whilst, bl <coughs> whilst black, brown, Islamic, uh, LGBTQYZ types can sleep easy in their protected class beds, uh, despite saying and doing things that would see the likes of you and I uh, banged up for life. Uh, cast your memory back to those hazy days before March 2020. Uh, that would be 2020 BC, before Covid. And the Conservative Party had just won the uh, general election by a landslide and Utopia, uh, they promised us, was just around the corner. But we didn't get Utopia, though, did we? We got tyranny instead, as did every other country on Earth. And a semi-dictatorship is the new normal, and we must simply get used to it without asking uh, too many impertinent questions about democracy or the rule of law or bodily autonomy and uh, all sorts of other such trifling irrelevances. And our new normal is not something promised to us in the last manifesto. We didn't vote for the globalist-led Covid tyranny. We didn't vote for the rise of Black Lives Matter. Uh, we didn't vote for the destruction and decolonization of our institutions, culture and heritage. Uh, we didn't vote for mutilating the bodies of children who want to be a train driver on Monday a nurse on Tuesday, and the possessor of a new set of non-performative genitalia on Wednesday. We didn't vote for the takeover of our institutions by the Trans Brigade, which enables uh, men made up as vaudeville hookers uh, to uh, access children's spaces. We didn't vote for the RNLI to escort Muslim males of fighting age from rubber dinghy to luxury accommodation, uh, even as homeless ex-servicemen live on dark, cold streets. We didn't vote for the establishment of government-funded misinformation and disinformation units, uh, a.k.a. the Ministry of Truth. We didn't vote for online censorship laws, uh, which exist only to silence people who speak out against the destruction of our civilization engineered by the traitor class and we didn't vote for 15 minute cities exorbitant energy bills net zero carbon credits and the multi-billion dollar business behind climate change uh, we didn't vote for the destruction of farming, or at least of the farms not owned by William Gates II. Uh, we didn't vote for the introduction of mRNA into the food supply. We didn't vote for the heavily propagandised attraction of eating insects and bugs uh, instead of the sizzling steaks routinely served by masked functionaries to bloated WEF tyrants in Davos. We didn't vote for our universities, media and civil service to be taken over by a clutch of deranged Marxists with no regard for traditional England or the English. 
We didn't vote for the neo-fascist politicization and paramilitarization of the police. We didn't vote for the Islamification of the Home Office and Foreign Office. We didn't vote for an engineered proxy war against Russia. We didn't vote for gifting billions of pounds to one of the most corrupt nations on earth, governed by an assortment of neo-Nazis and criminal embezzlers. We didn't vote for our own government to actively talk up a potential World War III in consequent conscription. Now, all of this rather begs the question, why do we get this chilling tyranny when we actually voted for people promising us freedom, democracy, prosperity and peace? So the answer to that is simple. Our politicians no longer represent us. Not one iota, not one jot. Like drink fueled fame-struck groupies, they've fallen into bed with the global movers and shakers and they now do their every bidding. UN Agenda 2030, Sustainable Development Goals, Diversity, Equity, Inclusion. Uh, these are the mantras of our politicians' new gospel. And our traitor class politicians sit at the feet of deeply sinister Klaus Schwab and his psychotic billionaire club uh, in Davos, headed by Bill Gates and George Soros, who flick golden crumbs from their globalist cake into the slavering jaws of their gratefully corrupt pet politicians. I look at where we are now and I cannot see anything other than full-blown tyranny circa 2030. Now, the globalist monsters have the malignant desire to bring such a future about, and they also have the means via puppet politicians, future pandemics and government-controlled uh, central bank digital currencies. You want to pay your bills in the future? You must first take the jab and stop criticising the government. Western politicians have declared all Western citizens to be their enemy, and in so doing they have become not just our enemy, but a genuine, threatening, dangerous enemy of Western civilization itself. Which is something you should bear in mind next time you vote. Finally, on a not uh, altogether unrelated note, um, I've just published a book titled COVID-19, All Lies, All Crime uh, on Amazon, um, which is worth a read, uh, if I may say so myself. And the link is in the description box uh, below this video. Uh, thank you very much.